You can use the old school shrimp method, the fish in method, and the fish less method. All of them work, and we're gonna talk about them today. How can we make one of these Friday videos without thanking our amazing sponsor, Coral Vault? Check them out, coral-vault.com, located in Texas, which is a perfect location for shipping around the United States. They have premium imports and aquaculture products. What you see is what you get, and they have all sorts of auctions going on all the time. Great product, great company. Check them out, coral-vault.com. Hey everybody, Matthew here from My First Fish Tank in collaboration with Marine Depot, bringing you week 17 in the beginner how-to guide for saltwater aquariums and reef tanks, how to cycle your saltwater aquarium. We're going to go over a few products that will help you cycle your tank safely and efficiently, and we'll put links to all those below. And as we do for every single one of these videos, if you want to read the accompanying blog that our blogger Max wrote, just scroll down and click blog below. It will redirect you to the My First Fish Tank blog. By the end of today's video, you might be wondering why didn't they go in depth into the nitrogen cycle? Well, because next week, week 18, we're going to do a deep dive into what exactly the nitrogen cycle is, which may seem backwards since we're going to teach you how to cycle a tank today, but our thinking is get your tank cycled, know how to do that practically speaking, and then we'll go for an entire video and take a deep dive into the science behind the nitrogen cycle. What does it mean to cycle a tank? Well, we're basically talking about getting rid of the dreaded new tank syndrome. And luckily, you don't hear hobbyists talk about this so much anymore because we've learned a lot about how to effectively cycle a tank. But the new tank syndrome is basically what happens at the beginning of the nitrogen cycle when your ammonia spikes. What used to happen is beginners would just put fish in their tank, all of a sudden their ammonia would spike, and they would see their fish get sick, get stressed, and even die. And it would happen over and over again to beginners, hence we called it new tank syndrome. Basically all that was happening is, is these beginners weren't cycling their tank properly. So the goal of today's video is to completely avoid that new tank syndrome and teach you how to cycle a tank. Why is it important? Why should I care about cycling a tank? Because I'm assuming if you're a beginner and you're watching this video and you're getting into this hobby, you love something about it, whether it's the inverts, whether it's the corals, the anemones, or maybe some certain kind of fish. And the worst thing you could do would be to create a habitat for them where they don't thrive. And if you don't cycle your tank, you're gonna see stressed out fish and possibly dead fish and other livestock. So do yourself a favor, follow the steps in this video and completely cycle your tank before adding your livestock. How long will it take to cycle your tank? You could do it in as quick as five days or it could take six to eight weeks and it depends on your method. There are pros and cons to doing a quick cycle versus a long-term cycle and we'll talk about them in a minute. How do you know that your tank is cycling and you're just not waiting around for nothing? Basically, you're gonna look at your ammonia and your nitrite. Your ammonia will spike first and once you start getting nitrite readings, then you will at least know that your tank is in the process of cycling. One last thing in this section, the more surface area you have, meaning the more reef rock, the more reef sand surface area and the more ceramic media you have, the more robust your cycle is gonna be. Because what is the cycle? It's really the process of nitrifying bacteria, colonizing the rock, which will then help convert your ammonia to nitrite into nitrate. So it goes without saying that if you have more surface area, more reef rock, more sand, more ceramic media, then there will be more space for that nitrifying bacteria to colonize, which means you will end up with a more robust cycle taking place and more bacteria colonizing those spaces. How to cycle your tank method one is the old school shrimp method. And here's how this works. You go to the grocery store, you pick up a piece of shrimp. It can be frozen shrimp, it can be unfrozen shrimp, and you take it home and you put it in your tank. That's it. Why does that work? Well, what happens over time is that shrimp will start to break down, which will cause your ammonia to spike. Once the ammonia spikes, believe it or not, there are already going to be nitrifying bacteria in the atmosphere and in the water column. So slowly that nitrifying bacteria will start to consume that ammonia, which will then progress your cycle along. This method does work, but if you're going to do it this way, it's gonna take a long time for that shrimp to decay and cause ammonia. 
and then it's going to take a long time for that nitrifying bacteria to build up to consume that ammonia. I've actually done this method in the past, especially when starting out in the hobby, and I would say my cycle at the quickest using the shrimp method would take six weeks, but it has taken me over two months before to cycle my tank this way. And remember, your cycle is not done until your ammonia zeroes out and until your nitrite spikes and then returns to zero. A big pro of using the shrimp method is of course, you're not putting in any livestock during this time. So you're not gonna be risking the health of your livestock. But the big con of this method is how long it takes. But this is a tried and true method. It works, it's inexpensive piece of shrimp, drop it in your tank, test every few days, watch your ammonia go up, watch your ammonia go down, watch your nitrite go up, watch your nitrite go back down. And once your nitrite's at zero, you're done. But be patient if you use this method, it will take you several weeks to several months. This isn't the method I would necessarily recommend, not because it doesn't work, because it does work, but because we have products nowadays that can make this cycle so much faster. And I know when you're starting out on this hobby, you just wanna get going and get livestock in your tank. How to cycle your tank method two is the fish method. Let me just do a little disclaimer here. I don't recommend this method, but people still do it to this day and it does work for some people. I just don't think it's very nice to the fish. You buy one or two really hardy fish. Usually clownfish work really well for this or damselfish, but honestly, I found clowns to kind of be the best. You put clownfish in your tank. Then you start feeding those clownfish and the clownfish start excreting waste. Both that fish food and that fish waste will break down into ammonia, causing your ammonia to spike. Once your ammonia spikes, then the nitrifying bacteria will start to populate, consuming that ammonia, and then your nitrite will spike. Once your nitrite spikes and go down to zero and your ammonia is at zero, then your tank is cycled. The benefit of doing it this way is the cycle probably will be faster because in that first shrimp method, it takes a long time for that shrimp to decay. But when you're using actual livestock, that will happen a lot faster. So this probably won't take two months. Maybe this will take a month to six weeks to cycle. Another pro about using the fish method is instead of having to look at an empty tank for two months, at least you'll have one or two fish that you can look at and you can interact with during the cycling process. But the cons of this are obvious. It's just not nice to your fish. Ammonia can be super toxic to your fish, and even if it doesn't kill them, it will stress them out. Another con is you're gonna have to test a lot more, because while it may be okay for clownfish to be with an ammonia level of 0.25 to 0.5, as that level creeps up closer to 1.0 or even above 1.0, you may need to do a quick water change to bring that ammonia level down to be less toxic to your fish. So it takes a little bit more work and a little bit more testing. If your heart is set on doing this method, stay tuned because we will shortly talk about how to add fish and nitrifying bacteria in a way that will be much kinder to your fish. And the third and final way to cycle your tank is the fish-less method. This is the method that I prefer hands down. It's kind to your fish and it goes quite quickly. The basics of this method are adding fuel in ammonia chloride and then adding nitrifying bacteria. Where in the first two methods, you weren't adding ammonia chloride directly, but you were adding some sort of decaying matter that would slowly break down. In this method, you actually add ammonia chloride, which means that you don't have to wait for all of that decaying matter to break down. You just add in the ammonia chloride, which then is consumed by the nitrifying bacteria, which you also add. So the gist of this method is buying a pair of products. One, you buy ammonia chloride, Two, you buy nitrifying bacteria and you put them in your tank together. There are all sorts of different products that make this happen, but let's talk about three distinctly and the pros and cons of each. The first product is Fritz Turbo Start Salt Water 900. I've used this and honestly, this is probably the quickest way to cycle your tank. And there are two ways of doing this. Oh, and when I say quick, I mean five days to two weeks. I've done it, it's usually taken about two weeks, but I've heard of people using this and their tank is cycled in a week, which is crazy fast. The two ways to do this, and you just follow the instructions on the back. The first is to buy your Fritz Turbo Start. You add it to the tank and then you immediately add your fish. And why this works is because if you immediately add your fish to the tank, they are going to be eating food and causing waste, which will build up that ammonia, which the Fritch Turbo Start, which is just live nitrifying bacteria. And by the way, this one smells like rotten eggs. It's supposed to smell like rotten eggs. So if you buy it, you're like, oh, it's gone bad. No, it hasn't gone bad. It's actually quite good. 
But if you use this method, you add the fridge turbo start, you add the fish, and then you test and things should settle out within a couple weeks and you shouldn't see any dangerous ammonia spikes. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it is to pair this with something like Dr. Tim's ammonia chloride, or you can use the Microbacter quick cycle, which is just ammonia chloride as well. And then all you do is you add the ammonia chloride first, and then you add the Fritz Turbo Start, and you add them at the same time, basically, and the Fritz Turbo Start live nitrifying bacteria will consume the ammonia chloride and your tank should cycle within a couple weeks. The second method that I like is exactly the same as the first, just a different company with different strains of live nitrifying bacteria. And that's the Dr. Tim's method. I've used this method for years and it works well. While it may not be as fast as the Fritz Turbo Start, it works just fine. And my tanks cycle within two to three weeks using this method. All you do is you start with the ammonia chloride and you follow the directions and you dose enough to get two parts per million. Now you have your fuel source in there. Then you get a bottle of the Dr. Tim's live one and only nitrifying bacteria. You follow the directions and you dose the tank. That's it then all you have to do is you just test every few days. Your ammonia levels will automatically start out at two parts per million because you just added two parts per million ammonia. So what you're gonna watch for, for that cycle to be complete, is that ammonia will come down, your nitrite will go up, and your nitrite will go down. Once your ammonia and nitrite are at zero, just like every other method, your tank is cycled. And for me, this has taken about two to three weeks. And the third company, which I've actually never used both these products, but it's the Brightwell Microbacter Quick Cycle and the Microbacter Start XLM. Make sure you don't buy Microbacter 7 or Microbacter Clean. You have to buy the Microbacter Start XLM. The exact same as Dr. Tim's. Follow the directions. Start by adding the Quick Cycle, which is ammonia chloride. Raise the ammonia chloride level to 2.0 parts per million. Then you add the Microbacter Start XLM, which is live nitrifying bacteria. Follow the instructions. And again, you're going to test. The ammonia will start out high. Once the ammonia drops, nitrite spikes, goes back down to zero, your tank is cycled. Can you mix and match between companies? Like for example, can you use the Microbacter Quick Cycle with the Fritz Turbo Start or the Microbacter Quick Cycle with the Dr. Tim's one and only? You probably could, but I know these companies have put countless hours into developing their products together. So you might as well stick with a pair of companies. Either use the Brightwell products, use the Dr. Tim's product, or if you do the Fritz Turbo Start, there is no Fritz Turbo Start ammonia chloride. So you would either have to pair it with an ammonia chloride from another company or follow the instructions, add this, and then add your fish. Okay, so you've chosen your method, and let me be clear here, our recommended method is method number three, using ammonia chloride and beneficial bacteria. I really like the Dr. Tim's method, or I like the Fritz Turbo Smart method. They've both cycled tanks in under three weeks for me. You've added the beneficial bacteria and the ammonia chloride. Now what do you do? Well, first of all, leave your lights off. Don't put in your protein skimmer. Don't put in your filter socks. If you have a UV sterilizer, leave it off, and don't do water changes. One caveat to this, though, is if you do have fish, and you are using a fish in cycling method, you do want to test your ammonia level. And I'd say if your ammonia gets over 0.5 and definitely if it approaches one, you're going to want to do a water change to bring that down to make it safer for the fish. But why don't you want to add lights? Well, lights are just going to cause nuisance algae during this and there's nothing in your tank that needs lights. Even if you have fish in there, your fish don't need the lights to survive. So just leave them off during this process and you won't get the nuisance algae. Why don't you want to do water changes? Well, because you don't want to remove any of that beneficial bacteria. Yes, it's true that most of the beneficial bacteria is going to live on the surface of the rock and the sand and the ceramic media itself, but some of it is going to be free swimming in the water column. So you don't want to remove that during the cycle because it will just take longer to cycle. Well, then why would you not want to put your filter socks in? Well, because you don't want the filter socks to become colonized with that beneficial bacteria. You want all that beneficial bacteria to colonize on your rock work and on your sand bed because what's going to happen is you're going to have to pull out those filter socks every few days to clean them out. Also, you don't want to remove that decaying matter because that decaying matter that's going through your system is, is what's going to break down into ammonia chloride. So why would you want to remove that when the ammonia chloride is the fuel for the nitrifying bacteria? So just leave your filter socks or sponge out during the cycling process. Same thing goes for using a skimmer. If you bought a skimmer, don't use it yet. We don't want to remove decaying matter from the tank. We want to leave all the decaying matter we can in the tank so that it will give more fuel for the nitrifying bacteria. And lastly, UV sterilizer. Most of you probably don't have a UV sterilizer and you don't need a UV sterilizer. But if you do, a UV sterilizer is there to kill bacteria. So during the 
recycling process, we don't want to kill any of those beneficial bacteria. Okay, so the tank is cycling. How do you know when it's complete and what to do when the cycle is complete? Like we said, you're testing every few days during this process for ammonia, nitrite, nitrate. Once the ammonia goes all the way up and all the way back down to zero, then your nitrite will go up and your nitrite will go back to zero. Once your ammonia and your nitrite have gone up and come back down to zero, you're done. Now you might be like, wait, but I have a lot of nitrates in the tank. Yeah, that's true. Nitrates use an anaerobic bacteria and typically those anaerobic bacteria take a lot longer to colonize. So what you do once that cycle is done, once that nitrate's at zero, is you perform a water change. Typically at the end of a cycle, my nitrate levels are somewhere around 50. And so if I do a big water change, a 50% one-time water change, that nitrate gets down to around 20 to 25, which is a completely acceptable level for your fish and your livestock starting out. So your cycle's done, you've added your few fish in, you start testing, and oh no, the ammonia starts going back up again, and oh no, your nitrite starts going back up again. Totally normal, totally normal. This is a, a secondary cycle. Because if you think about it, your tank had a really soft cycle. You added in a certain amount of food in ammonia chloride, and then all of that was consumed, and now you have a certain amount of nitrifying bacteria, but you weren't continually adding food in during this time. So once you add in your fish, it's totally normal for that ammonia to spike a little bit because you're adding in more detritus, more fish waste, more fish food, which means that the nitrifying bacteria need to catch up. So all I would say here is when adding your fish, don't add like 10 all at once. Add a couple at a time, do your water testing, Watch that ammonia go up, hopefully to like 0.25, and then it should come back down, causing like a secondary cycle. You could have a tertiary cycle as well, but as long as you go slowly, those cycles won't be nearly as big and dramatic and probably won't harm your livestock. This is the ugly stage warning. Ugly stage warning. Once your cycle's complete, once you've added in your fish, your lights are on, your skimmer's on, everything's up and running, be prepared for your fish tank to become this ugly, ugly brown mess. It was beautiful and it was white sand and everything was nice and then all of a sudden one morning you wake up and it's covered in brown. It's normal. It's called diatoms. Don't worry. We'll talk more about that later but every tank goes through weeks if not months of ugly stages. Don't do anything about it. We'll talk about how to remove it if you need to remove it. If it's bad, it's not bad. Brown diatoms, they happen in every tank and they usually happen over and over again. It's a sign that your tank is maturing. So when you see ugly brown algae after your cycle's done don't panic don't panic we're here to help if you have any questions about it just keep watching the series you can always contact marine depot or my first fish tank if you have any questions well that's it for week 17 how to cycle your aquarium if you found this helpful please consider giving it a thumbs up subscribing to my first fish tank and to marine depot and for any of those cycling products that we talked about today they're in the description below be sure to tune in next week where we deep dive into the science behind the nitrogen cycle so if you want to nerd out on biology tune in next week and if you happen to know somebody who might want to build a saltwater aquarium we would really appreciate it if you would share this series with them as always everybody happy reefing be well we'll see you next time take care